now, even though it's just been a few days since the launch of this particular service, that you would have been able to identify the service provider. Uh, can I take a... I guess that most persons in here would know who the service provider is for the 4G LTE. And that service provider will be whom? Digicel, that's right. And so we have a distinguished panel this morning comprised of representatives from the Digicel company as well as distinguished ICT, uh, what should we say? <laughs> Expert, many, many, many years in the service, Dr. Lee. And of course, we have from the policy level, none other than the Minister of State with responsibility for ICTs, the Honorable Dr. Edmund Mansour. And they are ready to share with you important information on this topic, and so I'm going to pass on directly right over to the panel so that they can begin today's session. Thank you. Good morning to everybody. I want to welcome the representatives that are here from Samsung. Welcome to Antigua. I look forward to dialoguing with you later on. I also want to welcome Glenda Medford, who has joined us, and to the representatives of Smartboard. Casey, welcome to Antigua, and to everyone else that is joining us. I want to, along with Dr. Lee and Mr. Matherin and Mr. Corcoran, and for the remainder of this is not gonna fit in there, fit it in there. And for the remainder of this session to have some public discussion because we're being joined by viewers and listeners on ABS television. And this particular presentation is also being captured for subsequent availability on, on YouTube and on the internet and so on. To talk about some technical aspects of 4G LTE, which I believe Orville will get into, but certainly from my end to look at to look at what Antigua and Barbuda can do with a 4G LTE platform. And I want to look at it sector by sector. I want to start with government first and to maybe give you some insight as to what, we're, what we have planned and where we are in this planning process. I want to say that Digicel would have made a very bold move to choose an island nation with 100,000 plus people for a 4G LTE rollout based on a model where Antigua and Barbuda is indeed an ICT leader. And I have to say this because I have had the opportunity to travel quite a lot in terms of preaching the ICT Antigua gospel. And I am confident that we are definitely on the right track. We have developed, like practically everybody on the planet, an intimate love affair with technology. And our love affair has blossomed into a more intimate one with the smartphone. And it is time that this intimacy translates into country competitiveness, company competitiveness, and citizen competitiveness. 
And I am hoping that today we can expand on the national discussion on how we can benchmark that competitiveness. I will leave Dr. Lay to talk about what companies can do, what businesses can do to make themselves more competitive. I will talk a little bit about citizen competitive next in the context of what government has already done. Not what we say we're going to do, but what we have already done and completed. And Mr. Corcoran and his team can develop the discussion on 4G LTE from a commercial perspective, where they see the technology evolving and what were those factors that may have triggered Digicel's board to finally agree after 13 plus months of negotiation to commission a 4G LTE platform. Well, I think Digicel knows that competition in the 4G LTE realm is imminent. That is in keeping with the government's policy for promoting competition in all sectors promoting healthy competition, promoting competition through dialogue, the telecommunications companies understanding what government is concentrating on, what we think are priority from a policy perspective, and achieving that with a happy blend of real issues in the real marketplace. The marketplace is not just 100,000 people. We have approximately 800,000, give or take 100,000 visitors a year, the majority of whom are day visitors, and then we have about a quarter of a million stay-over visitors. And when you look at resorts that have developed in Antigua and the yachting sector with the booming yachting sector, we are positioning Antigua as a niche destination. Great beaches, great weather, great ICT services. So, for the remainder of my presentation, I want to dwell on country competitiveness. Dr. Lay and Digicel can talk about company competitiveness. What companies need to be doing to be competitive? And I will say a few words about citizen competitiveness. And since I'm not going to talk extensively about comp company competitiveness, this is meant to be an interactive session. I just want to say, matter of factly, that we will meet shortly and invite representatives of the banking sector to talk about how the banks in Antigua and Barbuda can offer faster and better and more customer-centric services to people. It is totally inappropriate, it is totally inappropriate for people to be spending 30, 40, 50 minutes to be able to undertake a simple transaction with a bank teller. We have to make sure that the banking sector gets availed of all the requisite information. Digicel is there, they can talk to them, talk to, talk to whomever. We need more mobile banking services in this country. And we are prepared to talk to the banks. The same applies to the telecommunications sector themselves. They have to create significantly more customer-centric, customer-friendly mobile environments. I should be able to transact business with these um, companies. Many of them already have it, but we need to improve upon that. So there is the banking sector, there's the telecommunications sector, the insurance sector, public utilities. People should be able to pay their APUA bills online. I know they can do it with, I believe, ACB at the moment. Let us create an environment where people can perhaps get online and do some more interaction 
with the utility company. I also want to say in the, in the, in the issue of the delivery of LPG gas, you should be able to make your request online, indicate you know you would like it in this particular week, you can book it two weeks ahead of time, this is your preferred date, this is your preferred day, this is your preferred time. That way you can synchronize the arrival of the LPG truck with when you are home or when your relative is there, etc., etc. It's all about organizing these services. We expect all of these services to improve and improve dramatically. And customers, all of us are customers, need to make your opinions known and your requests known. Same thing applies to the wholesale sector, the retail sector, the services sector, but especially those areas where all of us need the services in an ongoing cyclical manner. We all need LPG gas, this, that, that. So that's my little take on that, and I'm prepared to expand on that later on when we have the question and answer segment. So let me talk about how we are enhancing country competitiveness. In 2004, mobile internet, um, internet penetration rates in Antigua were approximately 12%. Eight years later, we are passing 80%, and that is a forerunner to any discussion about making Antigua and Barbuda country competitive. And I want to say, without reservation, if there's anyone in this room, and I'm sure there isn't, but if there is anybody in this room who does not understand what I am talking about in the context of country competitiveness, let me say, let me say it to you this way. Every citizen, regardless of their age, in the coming years, I'm, I'm, almost, I'm almost tempted to say, in the coming months, if you don't have entry-level ICT skill sets, you cannot compete. You're likely, to have, you're likely to lose your job. I'm just having a frank discussion. This is why the government set about to put in all of those community computer access centers. We have 32 of them. We have five mobile IT buses. This is why we begun deploying laptops in the early childhood education system. Every registered early childhood center in Antigua and Barbuda received a laptop training and specialized software that was developed by the Ministry of Information to ensure that early childhood settings in terms of the management of those centers benefited from technology. And I hear people in this country, what, the, I call them ill-informed pseudo-experts. They can fix every problem. But if you ask them to pick up that chair from here to there, they can't do it. Early childhood education, well on the way. 1,600 laptops to teachers in the Technology for 2020 initiative. 1,600 teachers receive the units and connectivity locked in. $59 EC plus ABSD for three years with Lyme. But government itself, which provides services to its citizens, is also trying to keep up. It's not that easy. And we've spent 2012 focusing on the deployment of new hardware in mission critical areas in government. There's a major upgrade that's nearing completion in the passport office. We are trying to complete an upgrade in the Department of Labor. The Ministry of Tourism got a total makeover on the front end. We're working on what's called their back end in terms of modernizing their servers. We have been working in the complex that houses the office of the Prime Minister. The Cabinet Secretariat has benefited from new hardware in recent weeks. We have worked with Mount St. John's Medical Center 
in previous years, central government does not service the, the statutory bodies. We have been working with the Mount St. John's Medical Center. We have assisted them a few weeks ago and we will continue to work with them. We have worked with the Antigua and Barbuda Port Authority. The Ministry of Social Transformation, all of its divisions has had a virtual makeover in terms of IT. Ministry of Information itself is undergoing certain changes. We have assisted over 120 different locations in government in, in, in the year 2012. Hardware and connectivity. I want to say that our border control system, the immigration management control system is fully automated. On a weekend, when those jumbo jets arrive and our now small airport, because it's small, that's the reality, we have hundreds of passengers in the arrivals hall. When Dr. Lay was head of the the IT center, we were able to work with a company to automate that whole immigration management system. So when the passenger arrives at border control, within 19 seconds, we can process them and they go to the hall to collect their luggage. That system talks to a back end, which has totally been totally modernized. Four years ago, the Public Safety Communications Network was commissioned. I see Mr. Pat Doran here, who was the supervisor of it. Single largest ever investment in mobile technology to assist the security forces, the police, the defense force, the Coast Guard, the Office of National Drug Control and Money Laundering Policy, Emergency Medical Services, National Office of Disaster Services, these are the same radios we use here today during the fest. These are mission critical agencies that have benefited from advances in the digital technology. All of that boils down to country competitiveness because approximately 90% of calls to the E911 center are answered in 10 seconds or less. The remaining 10% might get answered in 15, 20 seconds. There has been a marked improvement in 911 services in this country. That doesn't make news. Because the media is interested in what I call bacchanalis. They are interested in bacchanalis. They, the bacchanalis message we are preaching is that there is a highly ordered plan that we revise. It's impacting on all areas of the society. All areas of the public sector are benefiting from the transformational opportunities that are associated with technology. And we have launched GATE, the single most revolutionary ICT project we have been able to bring to fruition. On the gate, every student in this country in the secondary school system will benefit. Very simple. You'll get a 4G LTE enabled tablet device and 4G LTE connectivity from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Remember I just told you the media is interested in bacchanalis. Well, I want the media to know I'm a bacchanal man. I am a bacchanal man. I play mass in Trinidad for the last 20 years, and I hope my wife watching this, because she's going to start to laugh if she's home watching this. But when it comes to the serious side of bacchanal and getting things done, Count Edmund Mansour in. We are serious. On the gate, every third, fourth, and fifth former in the coming months, maybe by January, Mr. Corcoran, we think it could happen in January, February. Let's say by the first quarter of next year, 
every third, fourth, and fifth farmer in every school in this country will get a 4G LTE enabled device plus 4G LTE connectivity. We have negotiated with Digicel LTE connectivity on the tablet devices for five years. You know what that means, ladies and gentlemen? I don't have no speech here. No. This is a seminar. I had my speech yesterday. I come to talk to the people that are listening and to talk to you. And I have a very good team here to talk. I want you to see what Dr. Lee has to offer. I want the insurance executives to listen. I want the hotels to listen. I want the banks to listen. I want the public utility companies to listen. I want the people that sell us LPG gas to listen. Second component of GATE is the cadet program. It's really the first. I made reference to the tablets. Second. On the GATE, 250 young people will experience a full internship in the Ministry of Information. Minimum six months, four distinct blocks, new media, techniques, computer diagnostics, software, and upgrades. They will help us to roll out the tablets as part of their skill set acquisition. And fourthly, they will work in the Connect Antigua and Barbuda initiative, an award-winning initiative that has impacted over 25,000 people already in this country. The third component is e-connectivity for government. Government itself is leveraging on the 4G LTE platform. 1,000 individuals in all areas of government in the public sector, in central government, will benefit from access to 4G LTE, either from the customer premises equipment or from the dongle. So when we sat and negotiated with Digicel, when I say we, Mr. Samuel, the Prime Minister and myself, we wanted Digicel to come with the 4G LTE network because we know that there are imperatives in the commercial sector. But we made sure on the education front we were able to, to negotiate something solid, and for government, we also negotiated connectivity for a five-year period. And maybe you can ask Dr. Lay later on, what is the value of connectivity for a thousand individuals or a thousand locations at the lowest data cap that Digicel has to offer? What is it, Mr. Corcoran? 15 gigs. Let Dr. Lay calculate for you what is the value of 15 gigs of data for a thousand people spread over five years. All these, all these, what I, I call them, bacchanal journalists. Most of the individuals who don't have anything complimentary to say about this initiative of empowering students themselves have a tertiary education. They have a tertiary education. The mandate and the policy of this administration under the leadership of the Prime Minister is that all students in secondary schools are to receive the devices and 4G LTE connectivity, and I can say without reservation that in our negotiations with Digicel, we pre-approved an additional 6,000 devices for connectivity. Listen to me. Not that they're going to provide the government with it. We are in discussions with friendly governments about this, but when we get the device, we, won't, we don't want to have to go back to Digicel and to renegotiate, we have pre-approved it. I'm still talking to you about country competitiveness now. And I have made some references to citizen competitiveness. If we are going to, if we are going to, I don't think it's my phone. Can you just put this over there? Thank you. If we are going to produce competitive citizens. We have to understand that 
We have to start now. So Gate won an award at Canto recently, the, Can the Caribbean Association of Telecoms Organizations. I happen to have found out afterwards that Ms. Medford was one of the judges, a very distinguished attorney at law who works extensively in the telecom sector, who's in, who's in this room. I want to spend two more minutes with you, ladies and gentlemen, talking about citizen competitiveness now. And maybe I should use this forum to say that I'm fairly comfortable that the Honorable Prime Minister will be able to signal fairly shortly that a friendly government has been collaborating with us in the model that looks at the deployment of computers for primary school students and the Antigua State College and Abit and Abyss. Things don't happen overnight. Those discussions are ongoing. We had the opportunity to talk to representatives of the government of Singapore recently when we were at the United Nations. Those discussions are ongoing and we continue to have dialogue with a number of other friendly governments in respect of leveraging on the empowering potential of ICTs. We certainly recognize where our gaps are, where our weaknesses. We need to build capacity in cybersecurity and that capacity building is an ongoing exercise. We are likely to get assistance from a friendly government. And I want to say to parents, you have a responsibility to ensure that you provide your children, so my remarks are to parents and to caregivers, to give them those opportunities. The government is giving it to you there. And I'm going to end with this very simple reference. Three Tuesdays ago, we were on a site visit to our telecoms facilities at Mount Obama. And we made three strategic stops. One of the stops was at the Jennings Primary School, where some five years ago, we went in and there was a beautiful room and it was empty. And we made a request that the school would consider it for the establishment of a community computer access center and they agreed. And five years later, hundreds of students and adults have been into that facility under the guidance of a trained community technology officer. The place looked remarkably clean. The infrastructure is working. I had the opportunity to speak to the principal she had no concerns. Staff are using it, students are using it, people from the surrounding communities are using it. We made a second stop at the Erlings Empowerment Center, right on the main road in Erlings, because they were both on our way to Mount Obama. And when we came out of the vehicle, my acting permanent secretary, my permanent secretary was with me and the, act and the principal assistant secretary. We saw a bunch of kids, sort of, and I had no idea. I thought they were waiting to catch a bus. They weren't in school uniform. And what was instructive is that they approached Clement and asked, when are you all going to open the center? Because it was scheduled for opening. So as we got there, the center was opening. It seats about 12 people. And every one of those students was there. And I will be honest with you, it kind of shocked me because I thought maybe they were coming to play games or to surf. Everyone was in there doing homework. They were doing school-based assessments. The ages ranged from 10 to 15. The majority of them attended the Jennings Primary School. The majority of them lived in the community of Erlings. So I know that these things are working. The fact is, 
This is 2012. I am simply saying the future is here. 4G LTE is helping to bring the future to Antigua now. Digicel has made a substantial investment in the telecommunications industry in Antigua. And I want to say to Victor Corcoran and to convey to his board that is not lost on us, sir. We will continue to work with you and all of the companies to ensure that when it comes to country competitiveness and citizen competitiveness, Antigua is in the column where you will put the tick. We are ready. Thank you for your attention. I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Orville Matherin. I'm a technical manager at Digicel. And I'm here to go through mostly technical aspects of what 4G LTE means for us, or means for Antigua. Um, I'm assuming everyone here has a mobile phone. I'm assuming everyone here uses their mobile phone for some sort of data, whether it be to download emails, to maybe go on a, a few websites, whether it be for homework or for pleasure to surf. Um, LTE means we're offering the best there is out there. It is the best. There's nothing above LTE in terms of mobile, in terms of broadband, in terms of internet speeds. Um, this is a slide, uh, it's, it's a little humorous in terms of the stages that man has developed and the stages that data has developed. So you start from GPRS, which was really the initial phase of data. You know, people were using their phones, as they do now, for phone calls, sending texts. People wanted data, how can I get online? People were at home using the internet, but they were, just like cell phones, or what phones in the beginning where you can only use your phone at home, and then they develop cell phones so you can use your phones outside, people wanted the same for data. So the technology developed, the ICC. So you got GPRS. The speed wasn't very good. It was under a mega, it was a few kilobytes. Horrible, really. People wanted more. Edge developed. Edge came up, they said, okay, here we can get you better speeds. People were happy for a while, but you know, human beings were never happy with what we start with. So they wanted more. We go to UMTS and LTE. UMTS now gives us megs of speeds. LTE gives us unbelievable speeds. So LTE is here. Antigua is the first country in the eastern, in the entire Caribbean, really, excluding in Puerto Rico, where LTE is. LTE, I mean, many of you have seen the ads in the US or from our TVs of ads in the US, LTE in the US, AT&T, Verizon. Really and truly, LTE is less than 0.5% of a rollout in, across the world. Antigua is less than 0.5% of the rollout LTE here in, in Antigua and Barbuda. So LTE is here. So what is 4G? Now, many people look at it, what does 4G mean for me? What does 4G bring to me? Okay, so 4G is really a four generations. You have the ICC, who came up with, <coughs> sorry, who came up with the, the different models. You had 2G, which is really the GPRS, the Edge, which was 2.5G, the UMTS, which was the 3G, LTE, 4G. So you have different types of technologies on the 4G. You have, as indicated here, you have the WiMAX, which offers, which stands for Worldwide Interoperability for Mobile Access, Microwave Access, thank you and uh, it provides fixed and mobile internet access. It gives up to 20 megabits, but the problem with it is that it wasn't really catered to a mobile environment. Yeah? The HSPA really is a broadband, wireless broadband technology, which primarily at this point was the older to LTE. So LTE is like the new child. HSPA is more of a mature individual coming up. So this is what offers onto your mobiles, gives you those particular speeds. The LT, which stands for long-term evolution, is an evolutionary, brand new technology that is out, um, offering high, high, high speeds in data access. So, if you were to really race it, LT, the others, technologies, in terms of speed, is extremely at a, snow, a snail's pace. LT is really at the cheetah's pace when you really compare the speeds between the two technologies. Okay, so. Let's go a little bit into the technical. 
So in terms of your edge, in terms of the peak rate downlink I have here, is really environment, is really best radio environment, best technology, uh, best expectations. So for edge, you can really expect 0.12, which is 120 kilobits. Um, UMTS is 21 megs. Sorry, and LTE gives you 75 megs on the perfect radio environment. In reality, what you can expect is between 10 to 20. Here in Antigua, <clears throat> we've gotten over 20, we've gotten 30, we've gotten 40. Um, last night during our busy hour, for example, we were averaging over 12 megs on download speeds. So what did Digicel do here in rolling out 4G? It was a very, very expensive project, as, as Dr. Mansour alluded to, and to what I can attest. It runs into the tens of millions of dollars, US dollars. You have to go onto a site and you have to change out a lot of your equipment. All of your equipment, the old technology is not compatible with the new. So anytime you bring in something brand new, the LTE, it means a complete new infrastructure. New antennas, new, new site equipment, new core equipment in your base stations, new, new interconnect between the two. It's really all about a big, big investment. So here is our LTE coverage map, um, the digital coverage map. Those in red are where we have full coverage. Those in white is where we have limited coverage. Now, we've identified it after we've done all of our initial rollouts, and we've identified there are a few areas you can see in white, especially in Antigua, where we have already now gone forward and said we're gonna get new sites. We have to fill in all our coverage gaps, even before we move forward. Barbuda is excellent. I mean, you have it around the highlands there, which you don't have too many people living at this time. So at this time, the Codrington, the village, going down to the port is excellent LT. So what does it mean for us? What does it mean for us here in Antigua and Barbuda? For us users, for everyone here. It means super fast downloads. You go home, you click, it opens. I know many of you here probably have used YouTube, have used different downloading, maybe movies, have gone into certain sites where the files may be large, and you click and it buffers, and it buffers, and it buffers, and it buffers. Then it stops buffering and it starts playing, and then it stops after a few seconds and it buffers again and buffers again. With LTE, there's none of that. You click, you may wait five seconds, and then it starts. And there's no buffering. It goes from beginning to end. And that is one of the super advantages. I know as a young person, and I can call myself a young person, we go there and we get distracted easily. If I click on something and I have to wait too long, I'm bored with it. I want to move on to something else and do something that's going to attract my attention, keep me engaged. With LTE, you're guaranteed that someone who is now online, trying to serve, trying to get information, trying to get what they need, can get it faster, can get it better. It's really all about efficiency and speed at this point. So online gaming, I mean, this is a big industry in the US at this point, online gaming. You may think it's about fun, but it really is something that brings revenue at this point. People actually make money from gaming online. Things of these nature, things like this couldn't be done very well before. No. It isn't an issue. So what are the, some of the devices that we offer? <clears throat> Excuse me. Dr. Manso alluded, alluded to, we have the dongle and we have the CPE. Excuse me. So what do we, we offer? We give you a 599 CPE, which you connect at home. It's all plug and play, so there's no configuration necessary. You go into your home, you plug it into your outlet, you wait for 30 seconds for it to, to boot up, and then you go from there. You check your wireless. You check um, it has a particular security key so that no one else can get on unless you wish for them to get on. And then they go from there. That is specifically talking about the CP. For the dongle, it's something that works in your USB device. So you have your computer, your laptop, or your desktop. Plug it straight into your UPS, <coughs> into your USB, sorry. And you wait a few seconds for it to load. It does the automatic loading once again, once again. And then within a few seconds, you're good to go. You just click and you go forward. So here at our ICT Fest, what are we offering? You can get, Dr. Mansour spoke about the 15 gig, we're giving you 30 gigs of data. Um, what does 30 gigs mean? 30 gigs mean you can download movies, you can watch videos, it means you can uh, go on your Facebook, it means you can uh, do your research at home, whether it be for homework, whether it be for your business. We're offering that the 30 big gate of data for the same 199 price. 
if you pass the 30 gigs, we're not going to charge any overages. So you won't be charged for going over 30 gigs. What will happen is that we will reduce the speed. So there is a particular component there where we can throttle the speed down to 100 meg. Right now in the business place or in the business community, one meg is pretty much the standard. So what we're going to say is we're going to throttle you back to what is out there in the market. No overages whatsoever. So are there any questions, technical or otherwise? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Good morning. Uh, I prefer to be a little bit mobile, so <laughs> I take it, no pun intended. Good morning. Uh, this morning, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, 4G. I, I know that I'm supposed to speak about value-added service of 4G, but I can't emphasize enough what 4G really means. And so the guys have done an excellent job of explaining what 4G is, and I want to explain what 4G means. Uh, a little bit more, because I think that for emphasis sake, you have to understand that there's been a quantum leap. We've moved from 2.5G roughly to 4G. We bypassed 3G for the most part. There's been a quantum leap, and therefore, there's, with, with these quantum leaps, we have gone from, I mean, you saw the progression of human beings' evolution, and hence the term LT. Of course, we're talking today of up to 100 megabits per second, but the, f the truth is, is that the LTE evolution can really go up to one gig in the, in the specification. One gig. I mean, that's amazing. So we're in a technology that will allow us to go way beyond that. They're already there. And that, hence, the, the seminar topic, the future is now. In other words, we're not going to see anything substantially different in terms of this technology in the future. It's simply going to be an evolved state. So we've been, there's a quantum leap to where we are. Here we're going to see incremental changes and incremental speeds going up the line. In other words, an evolution, but not a quantum shift again. We're not likely to see that. So we actually have jumped into the future. Hence the term, the future is here. And with every quantum leap, there has to be a paradigm shift. In other words, what you knew before, you pretty much have to forget. Because you're in a different realm now. That's right. So there's been a paradigm shift. And the future is one word, mobile. Mobile devices. Years ago, we predicted this. Mobile devices is the way to go. By 2015, there will be more mobile devices than people on the planet. Did you know that? At the rate of, of increase. And so, when you understand that, you understand that the days of tethered internet access where you sit at home and have to wait for access to when you go home, you say, oh, I gotta wait till I go home for, for, for email or for this. It's over. Or where I have to shop when I go home or I have to do this. That, those days are gone. The error of the PC and the laptops, even though I love my truck laptop, is over. You hear me? Even the largest PC maker, Lenovo, they are now shifting out of making PCs. Yes, PCs are important, but the, the error, we've shifted. It's now mobile devices. It's tablets. It's cell phones. That is the way the future is. It's here now. Because with mobile access, internet anywhere and everywhere, 
then you only need a device that's also mobile, right? You no longer need to go home and wait and do that. And so there's been a huge quantum leap in the technology itself, in the connectivity, and there's also been a shift in the way people use the internet and the way they access it by these devices. But ultimately, the reason why people do it is what? It's communication. It's interaction. Ultimately, it's content, information. Information age, as Mr. Manso likes to say. And I wish to say thank you to you and the government of Antigua and Barbuda for seeing the future and for responding in such a positive way. And for Digicel, for coming on board, I, I can imagine the expense. I mean, AT&T in the States is just now rolling out by fast as they can Fuji LTE. And Antigua has it in its own nation. We're covered with it. And U.S. isn't yet fully covered. And yet there's so much more advanced, so much more money. So the error, we're now in the mobile era. Mobile devices, mobile internet, mobile payments, mobile this, mobile that. It's the way basically people have moved all these years. From the donkey days and the running and traveling and cars and airplanes. We are mobile creatures. And so tethered internet access kept us what? Well, now we finally have reached a stage where the technology has kept up with the people. People are mobile. They want mobile internet. They want mobile communication devices. And so we, and we see a time coming very soon where you have simple convergence of everything. And of course, 4G in its, in its basic state is really that. It's IP packet switch network, which basically converges voice, data, everything else you can think about that we think of communication. That is the future. And it's here. So, I am going to talk a little bit about what it means for businesses, what it means for you, what it means for the consumers. And we're going to introduce a product today that goes hand in hand with this concept of mobile internet, mobile access, access to information. And we are going to talk about a product called CoMobi. Mobi is the term we use on the internet for mobile, mobile devices, mobile internet. And... Um, and GoMobi is a collaboration of, of 14 uh, different leading telecommunication companies. Ericsson, Google, uh, GSM, Microsoft, Nokia, Erasmus, Samsung Electronics, Cineverse, T-Mobile, Telefonica, Telecom Italia, Visa, and Vodafone. And what it really is, is simply this. It's user-friendly mobile websites. If you now go on a website, unfortunately, including Digicel's website, if you go on our Digicel website, and I've gone there with your cell phone, it's not formatted primarily for, and now can it automatically recognize mobile devices? Not yet, anyway. After this, maybe. So we have the technology that can do that. And it actually comes from an Irish company, too. Um, Affiliates Limited, with which we have a 10-year relationship going way back. And um, why, why go mobile? Well, obviously, we've, we've alluded to this. This is the mobile age. And um, I'm just going to ask you to look at this presentation with me a little bit more. And uh, we have actually done a demonstration of the government site. And we did it in about five minutes, maybe. And you're going to see how powerful this is in a few minutes. And we did one of ICT Fest. By 2013, more people will be using their mobile phones and mobile devices than PCs to get online. I'm sure you've seen that with the, the advance of, of these tablets and the competing. People are not buying laptops for gifts anymore. They're buying what? They're buying tablets. <laughs> They're buying uh, mobile uh, devices such as the advanced Samsung S3, which everybody wants to have now, Androids and and the apples and so forth. And of course, you saw the presentation earlier of Microsoft was also getting on board. And they wanted the partners in this as well. Mobile searches, that is people who are using not their laptops, but their tablets or their cell phones to do search. And search is the biggest way you find information on the internet. Of course, everybody uses Google, right? Google it. That's the terminology. Has grown four times. And by next year, it's projected to grow 11 times, 1,100% increase in people using their phone to look for information. And currently, the, the state of the web hasn't kept up with this mobile technology because most of them 
are not formatted for tablets or for mobile devices. And I emphasize, by 2015, there will be more mobile devices than people on the planet. Why you can't ignore being mobile? Users expect their mobile experience to be as good as using a laptop to go online. 60% of users expect a mobile site to load in three seconds or less. Again, we have super fast speeds. When you're doing content and video and all this stuff, you know, you want a fast site. With 3G or with 2.5G, we'd be had before, with Edge and GPRS, I, I never even did to look at the video online. <laughs> because the, the first thing that comes up, it says, you know, if you're going to view this, it's going to cost you more. And I'm not going to pay extra just to watch a video and I can go on my laptop and do that. No. Which is why the unlimited access is important and fast speeds. 78% of users would we try a site two times or less. In other words, people get frustrated if they can't get access to information. Makes sense. Right? And so, another importance of 4G and the speeds. 95% um, people with smartphones have searched for mobile information. Now, Dr. Mansour alluded to the nearly million sets of people who come here. A lot of them come here, they don't come with a laptop, they come with a smart, smartphone or they come with a uh, tablet. They want information. Where is that information available to them? Where's the content? You know, how do they search when you travel and you need information? Well, most people are using their smartphone. If that information is not readily available to them, then you're missing out on a huge clientele. 61% uh, of users call a business after searching, searching from their mobile phone. 90% of these people who use their mobile phone to search for targeted information act within 24 hours. In other words, they're more likely to reach them. You can't ignore it because as much as apps are important and we can't de-emphasize that, people prefer websites to search for information. That's what research shows. 79% uh, people prefer websites for product reviews and 90% 90% prefer to use mobile sites for purchasing. 57% would not run business with a bad mobile site. 40% would turn to a competitor. And so if you're not formatted for mobile devices, you're losing customers. That's the bottom line. Today, we are launching Go Mobile, which is basically everything that you need to get a mobile site. And I'm going to show you the government site which we formatted for um, first the ICT Fest. We did this in about five minutes maybe. This is an example of a mobile site. That's exactly how it looks on a mobile phone or tablet. And it's pretty easy to do. We, there's a, there's a, another um, application called Device Atlas which has about 9,000 all so different devices. All mobile devices, which you can then plug into your website currently. When, it's, when a mobile site, a mobile user tries to access it, it directs them to the mobile site. Now, this looks very different on your PC than it looks on your cell phone. You notice that immediately? Not only that, if you, for example, click call, me, call us, and you can do it on your cell phone right now, it will immediately call right away. If you click on find us, it will actually use Google Maps, and it's integrated with Google Maps, even in Antigua, Sir George Walter Highway. You see that? The cricket ground, Sir George Walter Highway. You notice that? And this is all automated. And Facebook, Twitter, everything is included. All of this is fully automated. This is a, a state-of-the-art uh, mature product. And it's available right now for less than $5 a month. Can you imagine that? For anyone. And you can do it yourself. Um, imagine a, a person coming in and wanting to find uh, the menu at a particular restaurant. All of this should be on their cell phone and available to them. They can even shop on their cell phone and buy products and services right now using this technology. Um, again, like I said, it doesn't mean you get rid of your desktop site because a lot of people will still use that. But uh, using automated technology... Whenever a mobile device goes and access that site, we can actually redirect it as well to their mobile site. Very easy to do. And um, let, me, let me just let you watch 
uh, a video, very short, because I think my time is just about up. And uh, we can take some questions. Let me watch it. Let me watch a little video so you can see a little bit more. Can you hear? Can you hear? Sorry. Technology, we have no audio over here. Oh, plug it in. One minute. Nothing? Oh, okay. <laughs> Can we get audio? So I set up my mobile site in five minutes. Because I need to move with the times. Because everyone's different. Because people can now find me. Because my popularity has soared. My site is now as mobile as my customers. And it was so quick and easy. Even a nine-year-old could do it. So, there is no reason why here in Antigua we can't take full advantage of the mobile internet that, G that um, Digicel is offering by having actual mobile sites as well. I, I don't know if you know this, the code at the end. Those are quick response code. You can generate them as well with this technology. You can give coupons, you can scan them, and they can be used for, to do anything. You give directions to, to, to um, actually go automatically go to some section or whatever. Those codes can be, that, this uh, technology automatically generates these codes for you as well. So you can give coupons right away, you can have them expire, you can have one person use them. They actually, they're so smart that you can't use the same device to redeem a coupon more than once if you need to. So this all, a very advanced technology. And this is available right now. We just finished our negotiations to bring it to Antigua, along with, we thought about it, bringing it with, along with 4G as well. And um, the minister was so kind to invite us to come and present it today. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. My first question is um, to the LTG. I would like to know if that system is connected to VSAT or is this fiber optic? Sorry, could you repeat the question? The LTG, I would like to know if it's connected to a VSAT system or is it direct fiber optic? One of the challenges of operating an LTE network on a small island such as Antigua and Barbuda is getting the connectivity back to the internet, which is essentially in the US. Uh, because as you increase the speed of internet, you increase the usage and you increase the need for the bandwidth. Uh, our network here today is connected back to the US uh, over fiber. We have a primary connection for the LTE network, I believe, into New York over the GCN fiber, a backup connection into Miami, also over uh, Global Crossings Network, and then a further backup via BVI. So it, it, it is connected over fiber, but that, that fiber connection is quite, quite expensive because uh, we're uh, purchasing huge, huge bandwidth. I think we've increased our bandwidth by about five or six fold already in the last couple of months that we need to be able to deliver these speeds. Thank you. Another question? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, maybe I'll just give them all out and then you can look. Uh, with regards to the, um, the 4G, is this business class service? Because I know I've had issues with um, 
uh, wireless and uh, latency on, on network. I mean, you, you, they tell you you get 20 megs, but you really don't get the, the 20 megs. Uh, Are you going to give me a list and, of questions? Yeah, or? yeah. and um, with regards to viewing certain sites on, for instance, your BlackBerry, I know you often get a lot of errors. I mean, would you have to upgrade your, your device to maybe a Windows 8 device or something? Because uh, I often get a lot of errors with um, you know s some of the sites that show video, etc. And with regards to the um, the site for Dr. Lee, um, in terms of redirection, um, how, how does that redirection work, and uh, how do you handle sites that requires authentication and security in that aspect? Thank you very much. I believe we'll begin with Digicel. Um, I'll answer the first question. I'll let uh, Orville, who's much more technical than me, answer the second question, if that's OK. Uh, your, your first question. The, the LT network we have switched on is a mobile over-the-air network. We have dimensioned the network for, um, for the future. I mean, the technology can theoretically deliver up to one gig. Uh, we have, to date, switched on, I believe, 15 sites in Antigua and Barbuda and are continuing to roll it out. Now. Um, any over-the-air network, your experience will depend on where you are relative to the network. As, as by our presentation, um, we have about 70% population coverage today. Um, so depending on where you are, you will get a slightly different experience. But our network has been designed for the future, 15 sites switched on, uh, three more sites presently being built as we speak. And we started testing this network in September. We put, gave devices to several hundred people on this island. We asked them to test our network hard, and we asked them to provide us feedback. Of those several hundred, two or three had coverage issues, because as I said, it is an over-the-air network, but the vast, vast majority were extremely happy. The average score we got in one to five, including those with coverage issues, was 4.4, and a score out of five on average. Um, download speeds, our average download speed last night was 12 megabits per second. We are seeing peak speeds of above 20, but it is an over-the-air technology depending on where you are located, depending on your, um, if you're inside a building like this that's reinforced concrete versus outside, you will get a slightly different user experience. But LT is the latest in mobile technology. It's a purely packet-based core technology, so it's built for data. It's not a data overlay onto a voice network. It's built for data. And 4.4 out of 5 average score in an island, uh, I think, is something that's very, very impressive. 12 megabits per second average download speed. Personally, we are very impressed with the network, but it, 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 there, there will always be one or two people who will have issues in certain locations with any mobile technology. We, we invite people to come and test it. We have teams of technicians who will go out to your home, test it for you in your place, place of residence, make sure it's working in your place of residence. If you're not happy with it, we've given a full money back guarantee to any customer to bring it back in, because we understand that Depending on the topography of this island, this is a beautiful island because of its mountains. But in some locations, in some valleys, there will be challenges. It's the nature of mobile technology. But I'd love to meet you afterwards, and hopefully I can get a technician to come and um, have a look at your location and make sure you're getting the experience you, you expect. The question was certain sites loading on your mobile device. It's really going to depend on what mobile device closer over this way. What I have found was, yes, there are particular sites on some mobile devices. What I will find on, I guess I can speak for Samsung, that I haven't had those issues we have with a lot of the Samsung devices that we have brought in as well, including the S3, the S2, all of the sites seem to be loading. I'd be interested to know what particular site you were trying to load that gave you issues with um, video loading. Um, and of course, this isn't specifically for LTE, it would be more of the UMTS network, which would, be, which would try to be loading. If you're using on the edge network, as we described before, then you may run into some problems in terms of the bandwidth and the speed that you need to open that particular video. So it really does depend on the technology as well as the particular device. Definitely, if there are sites that are still having issues, again, we'd love your feedback. And I'd invite anybody out there to please email us at um, 4GLT, sorry, ANU 4GLT at digicel.com. Because only through customer feedback can we, if there are still sites giving issues, can we pick up on these issues and make sure everybody has a wonderful experience. 
So th thank you for your feedback. In terms of redirect, what happens is that there is another product called Device Atlas, which has a library of 9,000 plus uh, mobile devices uh, according to W3C uh, specification. Then there's, you can generate the code from the same application we provide you. You can generate the code for your particular application using .ht access, PHP, JSP, ASP, all different types. You can either plug it into the, the folder, which you want to re redirect it, or you can put it into the actual HTML. Um, there are some issues with, with things that are dynamically loaded, for example. Some of that will uh, are difficult to do on, on mobile devices uh, as it is. So when we, when we build these mobile devices, it's, it's not the intent to totally duplicate, although you can, it will auto automatically try to format your desktop site to a mobile site when you actually create it at first. Uh, but the, the idea is to make sure that you, you, you use a small, because you're talking about a little cell phone, a little, little real estate, right, or a little uh, tablet, is to try to, to, to link or duplicate the most important things about your site, like your, your contact, your services, products, or or things that you want to highlight. Um, coupon codes and, and, and you know, uh, directions and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, menus for restaurants, for hotels, uh, uh, derivative access. Um, so lots of different ways to redirect. And like I said, the specifications are all um, embedded and, and uses another a device called Device Atlas. Does that answer your question? Thank you very much. We have another question on this end. Uh, yes, my question is, uh, how many links uh, do you have coming off of s out from Antigua outward? Uh, and uh, what, uh, what type of bandwidth are we talking about? There are two fiber systems, to the best of my knowledge. Again, Orville, do you want to take this to go into Antigua? I'll hand this over to Orville, actually. Yeah. Sure, yes. So, in order to, there are two fiber systems, a primary and a redundant. We've integrated an MPLS network, which is... Uh, Kind of like a IP redundancy built into your router network. Um, so to answer your question, sorry though, uh, the primary network is an SDM4 at this time, and we watch an SDM4. So that is about 600, roughly 600 megabits, going out of capacity on your primary. Again, we're watching the utilization. If we need more capacity, we're going to increase it as the need is showing. But right now, it's about 600 megabits per second. 600 megabits, sorry. I just want to add as well that um, when the Southern Caribbean fiber optic, sys fiber optic cable system was landed in 2005, I think, uh, 2006, it was provisioned to have a maximum capacity of 64 STM1s. And the national capacity requirements for every inhabitant um, is really between five to six STM1s. So you can see that that particular cable system is provisioned for to take us to 20, 2025 and maybe 2030 and beyond. And um, the reason I am highlighting that is there, the landing of that fiber was shrouded in a significant, I would call, controversy. Suffice it to say that that particular fiber cable system is powering up 90% of government services and is certainly um, assisting in a major way in ensuring that there is um, off-island capacity, certainly in the case of Digicel. Let me also mention that Lime itself uses that particular uh, cable sy system for redundancy purposes. I happen to know that there are two sites that Digicel is trying to get operational. One of them is within the confines of the Antigua and Barbuda Defense Force. We are waiting for clearance from the Ministry of National Security in that regard. The other one is located in the village of Param, and we are trying to um, uh, sort of catch up on all the requisite approvals. I believe that matter may have gone to the cabinet last week so, so that Digicel can erect a tower there. Just to follow up on what the minister said, we are, it's only possible for possible for us to bring LTE to Antigua because of the fact that there is um, the fibre capacity that is available. Uh, Orville mentioned that we are presently using an STM4 from our primary connection, but we have agreements in place, we have contracts in place, we have budgets in place to expand that and expand that rapidly. So although today it's an STM4, tomorrow it could be an STM8, depending on the reality of the demands in the marketplace. So, so the capacity is there for significant rapid 
further expansion, as is the approval for the investment. I, I have another question um, concerning the LT. Um, earlier you mentioned it's um, the LT, it's plug and play. I'm familiar with open source. I would like to know if it's compatible with open source, say um, Ubuntu or Debian. Question, I would like to know if the LT is compatible with the open source environment, whether it's um, like the operating system, Ubuntu, or um, Debian. Okay, well, this is a, a tough question because I think on the technology, what we're providing through LTE is access to the data network. So the open source is really asking, open source is really creating something at this point. So really, um, the devices are really dependent. They are limited in terms of the devices that can be using LTE. So it isn't, as it were, open source. Excuse me. So the devices, really, that you can use for LTE are not open source devices. They are limited. They are band specific. Um, because in the technology, you're using a specific frequency band to operate LTE network. And that is, is what you need. So no, they aren't open source. Devices. Are there any other questions before we wrap up this? Okay. Um, I'd like to direct this question to Mr. Honorable Minister. I was pleased to hear you. I was pleased to hear you say that um, through friendly governments, we will be having some assistance with regard to um, the capacity of the Integrated State College. Are we speaking about tablets for tertiary as well? Because I, it, it, the t tertiary education was not included in the original plan for rollout of the tablets for students. But later on, you said that um, through friendly governments, they will be, you will also be getting some assistance. So I was wondering if we're talking about assistance with tablets for students at the state college and other tertiary institutions. We, we are still in negotiations with these friendly governments and the answer your question specifically, it, will, it would be the provision of tablet devices because we would have pre-cleared connectivity agreements with, um, with Digicel for an additional 6,000 units. Um, those discussions have been ongoing for several months and the lead person in those discussions is the Prime Minister and of course um, to make a long story short beggars can't be choosers if I think you know what I'm talking about we're in a I, very complicated discussion process with two different friendly governments and those are being um, piloted specifically by my boss okay I was just I, curious because it just seemed to me passing strange that you we are certainly with the, the um, um, preschools, and then we, we zoomed to the secondary school, but we, we um, left out the tertiary. So I was just curious as if there was a particular reason why. Well, um, I think that um, we have made um, repeated attempts to address that issue. Regrettably, they have not borne fruit. Okay. Well, I'm happy to know that. Even though I'm no longer at the State College, I'm happy to know that they're in con under consideration. Thank you. We have another question on this end. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, with all the speed that we have now, uh, are we about to get? How does it affect uh, the infestation of viruses and so on? What? what Digicel is providing is we're providing an LTE network. We're providing a super fast pipe to allow people to access the internet. How, how that access is used or, what, or what, what, what they download or whatever, is they still will have to use standard uh, security protocols and software on their devices. I mean, we're, we're, we're offering the highway. We're, uh, we'll allow the customers to choose what they want to download, what they want to put on the device, etc. But obviously, they'd have to um, follow good uh, uh, web practice, or we'd recommend it, if that is, uh, answers your question. So it, we, it wouldn't be part of our responsibility. It's the, the device to put the software on his device, the end user. 
Thank you very much. So that means you should make sure you investigate and get well educated about the security applications that you can utilize with your devices. I think in a summary, any other questions? You have about five more minutes. Yes, we have one over here. Just one last question. I, I'm not sure it's a follow-up question to the gentleman behind me. Um, the, the dongle, what are the system requirements? Um, do you have to, for instance, can you use a Mac? Can you use Red Hat Linux? Can you plug in any, um, into any operating system, uh, whether open source or... Or you meant, or you meant from, the, oh, from that perspective? Yes, you can, you can. We've tested that with different operating systems and open source operating systems. Yes, you can use them. Thank you very much for the clarification. Okay. Do we have any other general questions for any of our panelists? If not, I'm sure they will be around for a few minutes afterwards for you to interact with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. But I'd like you to just join together. Let us applaud the panelists today.